Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we are live, ladies and gentlemen, live on Neves Knives. How's everybody doing tonight? I see cue balls in the house. He's not late. Holy shit. What's going on, Chris? Man, I know I got a lot of comments about this being just entirely way too small, and it is small. It is small, and for a lot of people, it might be too small, but it is a damn good knife, man. I, I really like it. I mean, like I said, it is small. It is tiny, compact, but super fidgety, um, super useful design, super slim. I mean, like, just you just lose it in your pocket, but the action is really, really good. Um, I think it's the direction of the flipper tab and the way it's uh, leveraged. It just it, it pops out every time. Really, really good and super duper smooth on the drop. But the reverse flicking hole is done exactly how they should be. Like the edge is not chamfered and where you're just slipping off, like it grips you, which is really good. So like even like left hand, super easy. Um, I'm really enjoying these. And I like that I got two of them, so I can always swap scales. Now I did not know this, so you know, obviously I can't link it or anything like that, so I wouldn't have put it in the description. But somebody brought to my attention that uh, they're going for a bit cheaper on Chicago Knife Works. So um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. So, But somebody else brought that to my attention. But we do have a scammer alert. Um, so somebody else brought this to, my, to our attention. Kara looked into it. So somebody um, bought a knife from them. And was asking, like, you know, like, they haven't received the knife or heard anything. Like, what's going on with them? So, Kara did a little research. And it's, like, it's a scammer site. So, watch out for it. Folding Knife Sale. FoldingKnifeSale.com. They look like it's badass. It does. They got a lot of great knives on there. And they're all going for prices that is almost too good to be true. In some cases, they are entirely obviously are too good to be true but you think like maybe they're getting them on wholesale you know that's what i was thinking like maybe it's a possibility they're getting them at wholesale prices and then you know something like that you know and then they can get it to you for a lot more affordable but no they're ripping you off so um and if they're not i'll come back and say that i was wrong but uh for what we see one of the main reasons why we know what Kara found out is Buck, right? They have Bucks on there. They actually have their site, like, where it just says Buck, like, as if, like, they're Buck. But when you look into Buck's dealer policy, you must maintain a physical storefront. You must be in the USA and cannot sell to anyone who plans to sell outside the USA. Um, so... Meaning, like, for, for selling to, like, resell them. Like, you have to sell them from inside the USA. Um, dealers can't sell to wholesalers, freight, uh, forwarders, drop shippers, or any other retailers. This is why there is no way a Chinese website has wholesale pricing. Now, if you look at the website, he supposedly said, the person, that it was like, um, it seemed like their site was in some state in the US, USA, but you can clearly see it's a Chinese company clearly like um care did all the shit and it, it's a chinese company so there's no way that company could be doing that um but in many other reasons um what else uh the prices are obviously way too low the domain name uh made in march it, the domain name has only been made in march and is in china even though our um the person claims that they were from virginia um and, uh, yeah, so watch out for that company so that you guys don't get ripped off. I know I've had um, some stuff happen not too long ago where I bought some stuff and I got ripped off. So, you know, it's better to just buy from reputable dealers. Um, Amazon's always good because, like, like, say the Buck's on Amazon, right? That's coming from Buck directly from Buck. That's Buck's Amazon store. So a lot of these companies, they actually have Amazon stores. So, and you can actually see it. If you go to Amazon, like even when I um, link stuff, look at who's selling it. You can see who's selling it. And you know, it'll be either the company or a company that's affiliated with them. Like say like with Kaiser's, Mojave Outdoors is usually who I link from Amazon. 
or it's directly from Kaiser. One of the two. Um, John says, I'm not that computer savvy. Kara looked into it for me. Thanks, guys. Yep, no problem, John. No, I'm, I'm glad you said something. Um, I wasn't going to say who said it, but um, I'm glad that you said something because, you know, we got to uh, shine some light on these guys because this just, it's not good for the knife community. It makes us look bad. And, it, you know, some people that don't know will literally, and listen, it's not just you. I just did this like two weeks ago. Did the same thing from another company. Uh, because I'm constantly looking for deals and stuff too. But for people that literally are just getting into the community and are buying their first or second knife or something, this will make them shy away from ever buying anything online. When there is a ton. Like, you can get the best knives online way better than you can get from most knife shops. Of course, there's really good ones, you know, that you can go into, like Smoky Mountain Knife Works and stuff like that. But... Um, a lot of the knives, when you want to get into the community, they're going to have to be bought offline. But it's just they have to be bought from reputable dealers. And, you know, sometimes when things are too good to be true, they actually are. And then there's other times where it, it's, it, it is legit. You'll get your knife. But, like, say, AliExpress, where, you know, a lot of times they're knockoffs and stuff like that. Like, they're not actual, the actual knife, you know, even though it looks just like it. Or they'll actually use, like, the thumbnail of the real knife, but what they send you is an actual clone or knockoff. No bueno. Hey! My bell. The Beard of Doom! Shout out to the Beard of Doom! That is bucking nuts, knocking butts. I'll see my way out. No, stay, stay enjoying, man. You know what? I appreciate what you uh, did with the members. And tomorrow, we do have a members live. So if you are a member, don't miss tomorrow's live. We will have a live sharpening. So, and thank you again for the donation, man. I, I do greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, again, I do want to talk about it really quick. I'm not going to go into it because I know you guys don't want to hear it a million times, but we have a new affiliate with GP Knives and Blade HQ. That's a huge thing for the channel. So I, like I said before, I greatly appreciate if you guys are going to buy a knife from any of those companies, if you use our link, man, it would, it supports us so much. So thank you if you guys do. And, um, yeah, thank you. And hopefully you guys do. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this damn Kaiser because I think it's going to be overlooked. I do. I think people are going to overlook this one because it's a Tonto. However, this is a Tonto that's done the way a Tonto should be. And I'm going to explain. And it's the new Beg Lighter Tonto. Sorry, I, I switched places so the lighting is not going to be as good. But it's the Beg Lighter Tonto with the dual grind. I think it's 13 thousandths behind the edge right here, and then it gets up to 18 or 15 thousandths up here, something like that. But the geometry is amazing. But the reason why it's so badass is look at the spine. If I can get it to shine. Come on, yes. There we go. Look at the spine of it. The spine, I can't really taper it down because I don't have the light facing the right way, but it goes up right here and then goes down. So it does a drop point style tanto. So it is super easy to use this tip. So you have two tips to work with. Like if I want to, uh, if I want to use this tip, it's I don't have to lift up that high to use the tip, and I can use the secondary too. So because of that reason, a lot of times tantos. I know people bitch about the way they are to sharpen. We'll go over that in a second. But it makes it to where you have two tips and the cutting geometry passing through materials is really good. And this thing is stupid fidgety. They put larger thumb studs on this one. Um, do I have the other one right here? I don't think I have the other one right here. But if you compare the thumb studs, these are larger. So look at, they give you a big old gap to get to them. Nice micarta. So putting your thumb up to it, it's such a comfortable thumb stud, and it pops. I mean, it pops big time. Um, and then the drop, I mean, is just stupid, stupid good. It's so, so smooth. The jimping's all the way up the spine. Good jimping. Like I said, super slicey. They did a good choil on this. Um, good plunge grind, good choil. So many things are great about this one, and I, I just have the 
feeling that people are going to overlook it because it's a Tonto. Now, sharpening a Tonto, we'll get into that. Sharpening a Tonto isn't, why am I so backed up on my comments? Sorry, guys. I, I guess I, I didn't see your guys' comments. It literally just popped up like a billion comments. I didn't even think anybody was commenting. Uh, yeah, it's like the sharpening the knife twice. Right. That's the thing is you got to sharpen it. It's like sharpening two knives, right? So you have to sharpen this edge and then this edge separately. However, it really doesn't take that much longer because this is such a small edge. Like, you know, so if you know how to sharpen one edge, then sharpening the other edge isn't a big deal. So I guess if you have sh uh, struggles with sharpening, then yeah, I guess it could be a big deal because it's like, I already have enough trouble with one edge. Why would I want to do two edges? I get it. I get it. But, excuse me, if you know how to sharpen, it's not that big of a deal. You just sharpen the, you know, sharpen them both just separately um, at the same time as well, right? So you just don't do the same edge at the same time. You do one edge, then do the other edge, then flip over, do the other edge and the other edge. Um, I've done lots of videos on sharpening tonsils, and this one is a good one to sharpen because it's thin. It's not thick. It's super thin behind the edge. So sharpening this thing is going to take like half the time of more other knives. Um, it's just so thin behind the edge that it's it doesn't take you long. Even if you low back, lower back the angle, you can put a low angle on this, and it's still going to be very fast. It's just so thin. You know, 13 thousandths behind the edge. That's thin. Um, you know, getting any lower than that, it can start getting not problematic. I don't want to say that, but because this is great. But, um, you know, when you start getting to 10 thousandths and less, that's where certain steels can start uh, giving you some issues because you don't have any steel behind it. But in this case, it's perfect. Great. Um, exactly how it should be. Um, I probably wouldn't change much about it, to be honest. All right, let me see some of these comments. Let's get to the comments. What's up, John? Blades and Fades. Shout out to Blades and Fades. Definitely follow his channel. And also, Q-Ball just threw up a link for Beard of Doom. Definitely hit that link. And yes, thank you, Q-Ball. Hit the damn like button. Um, Lagmaster says, if I insert the knife into my foot, what will happen? Well, I mean, I would say mess around and find out, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you this. I I'll say this. The stabbing of the foot isn't going to be near as bad as the doctor's appointment. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the, the easiest part will be the knife through the foot. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, now, let's talk about some other knives. Riet EXO, check this out. You guys remember the video I just did? Look at this one. <laughs> we got a watermelon inside of it. I got to run it under a faucet and clean it. <laughs> this thing is so bad. Uh, it's so bad, but I'll clean it up. Anyways, um, you guys don't know. Well, maybe you guys know, maybe you guys don't. I did set, talk about it in the last video I posted. We are going to be giving a Riat EXO away to one of the Patreons for the 200K. I'm just having to call like this. <laughs> it, it's, it's sticky, right? Uh, watermelon juice. The other one hasn't been used. The other one, um, it might have a little oils on the, the, the gr it's green micarta, by the way, the other one. So the green micarta one is going to one of you guys. It's sitting in the box. Um, I don't want to oil up the, the micarta anymore, but brand new in the box. It's got the leather pouch in there. That's going to one of the patron members. I specifically bought it for one of you guys. I was trying to think, man, what could be a good gift? And when I seen those in stock, I was like, I know those things are going to be gone like that. And people, and again, I've gotten probably a thousand comments already of people upset that they missed it. And you know, um, hopefully they will be back in uh, in stock at another dealer soon. Um, as soon as they do, man, as soon as I find out, I'll let you guys know whether I can get a link or not. Hopefully I can, but I doubt it. Unless if it's Blade HQ. Um, the EXO, yeah, the, the Echo Skeleton. Um, you know, they did have the ones, what was it, Knife Center did the fat carbon fiber ones. Those ones were really cool. I missed those. And I was like, 
wanting to get one of those. I was willing to buy one of those ones, but I missed it by like a couple minutes. And that's how these things go. There's certain knives. They just, they're not going to stick around. Once they get in stock and people know, bam, they're gone. Like there ain't no messing around. You have to get on an email list or if once you find out, go now. Like there's no like, I'll do it in 10 minutes, something like that. Ah, no, get to it now. That's why I, that video I posted, if you guys knew how much I rushed that video, I literally got the knives and then I already had the watermelons because I, I was already prepared for another video, the other video, which actually I did, uh, you guys already seen that, the one with the katana or the, the quichetti. So I instantly said, all right, we got to get outside. Started filming it. Um, I put the video together like as fast as possible and got it up because I wanted to, to let you guys know that it was in stock and I was able to link it. So obviously there was a little bit of self benefits there, right? You know, I'm not going to lie about that. Obviously I was looking towards, you know, people use my link, it benefits and these knives, obviously. So I don't think anybody can be mad at that. But, uh, but you know, I was excited to tell people too, and I didn't want to wait till tomorrow and it all of a sudden it'd be out of stock. I know some people got some though. Um, I'm guess I thought I figured they would have had more because they had every single version in stock, but they went quick. Um, you're digging the new setting. You like it like this better? Because I was thinking like, you know what? I'm so dumb right now. I don't even have my microphone over here. <laughs> um, I was thinking. Sorry, guys. I was thinking I should of um, so yeah, turn your volume down if all of a sudden I'm uh, closer up. But I was thinking maybe I should change or leave it like this. I don't know. We uh, had it like this because me and Kara filmed the video today like this. So you guys will be seeing that here real soon. Talk about let me see this. Um, talk about Jim Bowie's original French style butcher knife that was made from a file and a meteor that started his legacy. Its whereabouts are not currently known, at least not till I found it. You found it? <laughs> um, I don't know about that one. Um, that, that one's uh, new to me. I don't, I don't know about that one. I know I've seen um, a lot of... Um, people in the community making knives out of weird materials. Um, you know what I did see? I seen this, um, what are they called? Damn it. I'm not going to remember the name. Somebody asked me to do a video on this one kind of knife. It's basically, it's called a, I think they also call it a ratchet knife or a pin knife. And it's a slip joint that has like this, this, uh, this loop on the back and it looked pretty interesting. I almost bought one. They were out of stock for the affordable ones. And the only two I could find one, one was not a great example. And the other one that was a great example was pretty damn expensive. I almost got it just to get it because it was like an authentic one from Germany and shout out to Q ball. He's been a damn member for Seven months. That's a badass. Jared, glad you finally have your own EXO. The EXO will still be here in case you ever want to borrow it. Kidding, of course. Early congrats on the 200K. It's been a wild ride. Yes, it has, man. It's been uh, it's been incredible. And we are literally right around the corner from hitting 200K. Um, so, yeah, man, I, the thing is, is that I'm probably going to, because technically I owe a giveaway to the patrons, so I'm probably going to have to do two separate ones, a regular giveaway and then the 200K giveaway um, just back to back uh, because uh, I owe a giveaway to the Patreons aside, separate from the 200K. And if, I don't want to collab at all because then that kind of takes a month away. So um, we're just going to do them separately, but that's good. You know, that, that's good for the Patreons because that means double the giveaways, right? Um, I know it, it's crazy. I never would never would have thought we'd uh, be here right now because my goal, I don't remember if you, you guys might not remember. I don't know. But if you guys, I did mention a goal last year or like the beginning of the year. I said I wanted to hit, I think, 80K or something like that, 50K or 80K by the end of the year. So, 
far exceeded that. Okay, so let's talk really quick about what we want. We're going to talk about the Hoback thing. Um, I knew we were going to get a lot of comments on that. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the Benchmade readout. Cue ball with the five bones. I've got two tickets to paradise. Pack your bags. We leave next year. You won't buy them because you think I'm a shoehorn with an attitude. <laughs> Thank you, Maurice, for the five bones, man. I always appreciate the donations. It massively helps the channel. Is there a new Hoback? There's not a new Hoback thing. No, there's just the same Hoback thing. So, you guys know I did the video. If not, go watch it. I uh, took um, the Quachetti, which is basically, I like to call it a modern day katana because that's basically what it is. It's like a katana machete. No, yeah, like, like a katana machete mixed into modern materials, you know, and we used, we did that and the uh the quaken and we you know cut up some watermelons did some stabbing some slicing and some chopping if you haven't seen it it was posted yesterday so go watch it um and we also you know checked them out up close and personal but you know i knew i was going to get some comments about the whole deal with the whole back you know and uh for those of you that don't know that uh basically you know he was not uh, up a uh, he wasn't forthcoming about where his knives were being made, and a lot of people were under the impression that they were being made in the USA, especially with the price tags. And he never said anything, and um, and everybody assumed, right? Now everybody knows that they're made overseas, or at least most of them. I'm not sure if some of them are made in the United States. I don't know. Um, but I made sure that in the video I put a thing up that said exactly where they were made, right? You can look at the specs and the specs say this long, this blah, 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 blah. And the bottom it says made and blah, blah, blah. So that's how I was, it. that's how, how I did it. I didn't go into it. The discussion in that video was because I already wanted to do so much in the video that it wasn't the time. It wasn't the time. The time was to check out the knives, look at the knives. And I know a lot of people would say that, well, that sounds like the time, right? The time when you're checking out the knives. But I, you know, I wanted to do the watermelon thing and I didn't want it to be an hour long video. Um, you guys got to understand that long videos, like it, it, it doesn't do me well. Right. Um, and I don't want to shoot myself in the foot with the algorithm because if I post a 30 minute video and people watch three minutes of it, it hurts me, you know? So I have to think about that stuff and talking about that subject would have been like an extra 10, 15 minutes probably in the video, which a lot of people might not have ever even made it to. So, but you know, it, it is not, I've, I spoke about this whole deal in another live um, I don't remember which one, but I did talk about it, but I just wanted you guys to know why I didn't bring it up in the video. Like I didn't think it was the time for it and I didn't want it to hurt my channel or sorry, the video. I really wanted that video to do well. It did. Okay. It's not doing as good as I thought it was gonna, uh, but you know, it is what it is. Not a big deal. Uh, but, um, you know, some videos do better than others. Um, guys, do you know if I can find good quality knives for $30, $40, and $50? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, man, I should have um, post put some in the... I did put some links up, okay? I put some links up in the, in the description. You can go to Blade HQ. Blade HQ has a lot of great budget knives. You can use my Amazon affiliate. Go there, click that, and just type in Civivi Knives or Kubi Knives. Um, the link is in the description. Either one of those, Civivi has the Civivi Praxis. Civivi Praxis. Um, it's, pro in my opinion, it's one of the best budget knives you can get. I'll grab one really quick. Thought I had it right here. Oh man, did I put, oh wait, no, care put it in this thing. All right, so... The Civivi Praxis is really good. What are some other ones? The Civivi Backlash, that's another good one. So this is the Civivi Praxis. $44, $42. Really good knife. Fantastic knife. Um, there's tons of great options. 50 bucks, you can get the Civivi Elementum. This comes in a hundred different options. Um, oh, this is a really good one. 
The Kubi Momentum. I think this is like 40 bucks. The Kubi Momentum. Badass knife right here. There's a lot of great options. And if you want to see more, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. the new Kaiser Beg, sorry, Kaiser Doman with the sheep's foot. Kaiser Doman. Go to my Amazon link and type in Kaiser Doman, D O M I N, and put in 154 CM because this is the 154 CM version with a sheep's foot. With a hollow grind. This is the best one they've made. That's like 40 bucks. Or no, sorry, sorry. I think it's like 55 bucks. Anyways, you can go to all my videos. I have literally budget, not budget videos, entire videos filled with budget knives. Um, all under 50, 60 bucks. So tons of videos for that. I think I seen it. Did I see something come in? <laughs> <laughs> Maurice with another five bones. I'm a lion with an alibi. While my name is being tarnished by President Teddy Roosevelt, insecure state of mind. <laughs> 10 to 15 minutes seems to be the most average viewer watch. It depends. It depends like how long. Like if I post an hour long video, that's probably going to be the average. If I post a 10 minute video, it's going to be like three minutes, four minutes, something like that. It just depends on the video, the type of video. Like if it's a first impressions, it could be two minutes because some people only care about seeing the action. They just want to see it, see the action, hear the price. That's it. That's all they care about. Um, but it just depends. Uh, the longer the video, the longer your watch time will be, but it's a percentage. That's what you're worried about. The percentage. How much of a percent did they watch? And, you know, there's other little things like, um, you know, not trying to go into this because I know most people don't have channels. But, like, if you guys click on a video, if I can get you guys to watch a video for 30 seconds before you guys start fucking fast, you know, fast forwarding and stuff, that greatly helps. Because, it, like, you can see when you look at your analytics, like, how fast people fall off. Like, where did people stop watching? you know, or, you know, where do they fast forward or whatever? And if you, they don't make it to the 30 second mark before they start doing that stuff, it hurts your video. It looks bad in the algorithm. So then that doesn't get pushed as hard. So, you know, there's a bunch of little tiny details that, you know, a, a content creator is trying to do to capture your attention, to keep you watching and, you know, that benefits us. So, um, under 30 bucks. Yeah. Under 30 bucks. I would say the Ganzo FH 21, the Ganzo FH 41 and the Ganzo FH 922. Those are all great options under 30 bucks. They're all three of those are under 30 bucks. Type in FH 41, um, Ganzo FH 41 or the FH 21 or the FH 922. All of those are great options. Um, and th that's like the best knife you can get for under 30 bucks. I'm not, you know, I, I, I got one back here, man. And it, it will compete with a lot of my $50 knives. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Ian with the five bones. Savivi Ortis is a banger. $40 knife or $40 knife at the moment on Blade HQ. Use my link. Ha! Thank you, Ian. I do appreciate it, man. Yes, that, that's another good one. Pretty much anything you get from Civivi is going to be good. The only one I would say to stay away from from Civivi in particular is the, um, what is it called? The sand. I just talked about it the other day. The something sand. Sand. I forget the damn name of it now, but sand something. <laughs> Don't get that one. Uh, but it's a Tonto with a recurve. You'll, you'll know it. Um, but any of the other ones, man, they, they're just, they're so good. Civivis, Kubis, Ganzo, Sativian, yes, but they do have bad ones. So that's why I don't want to just push people to Sativian because there's a couple that I can say like, yes, right. Get these ones. Uh, but then there's some that I would say, meh, right. Like they're, they're good, but I can grab another knife for the same price that will definitely beat it. So they're good good for the money. I'm not saying that. 
like great for the money, but I can grab another knife. That's the, the fit and finish is done a little bit better. The tolerances are a little bit better. Um, and just little details are done just a little bit better, not much better, but a little bit better. And in that case, I would recommend the other one, the rake P801. Yes, that's, that's a fantastic knife. I think that's 40, 39 bucks. Um, yeah, that's a great knife. Yeah, the ST-102 and the 103, those would be the two that I would absolutely recommend from Sativian. ST-102 and ST-103, for sure. Those two, I think, are very comparable to those Ganzos I mentioned. But I'll be honest, I do think that those Ganzos are like 5% better, maybe 10%. Um because of a few reasons. One, they use the wire clips, um, and I've gotten detent lash on a few Sativians. Um, now, my Ganzos, I, I don't think I have any Ganzos with any detent lash. Not saying it can't happen, but I've noticed I've gotten a couple Sativians that have had detent lash. So, and that's something I can't fix. I did get one and I was able, it wasn't that I was able to fix it. I was able to tune it and it went away. I don't know if you will see this, but I just got a Spyderco PM2 and it's my first real knife. I don't know. Wait, I don't really know how to sharpen a knife. Any tips? Absolutely. So one, congratulations on the knife, man. That's an awesome knife to have. Um, I actually have, I have a couple of them and I have scales and new parts coming for one right now that I'm about to dress up, um, from, uh, rips garage, I think. So you can get all kinds of parts and scales and stuff. I got uh, fat carbon fiber scales coming now, as far as sharpening goes, I don't know what steel you're dealing with probably S 30 V or no, probably S 45, but regardless, I have an entire playlist an entire playlist of sharpening videos from devices to freehand to everything you need to know. Stropping, edge maintenance, everything you need to know is in my sharpening playlist. I also have a ton of shorts. So um, I think I link the, I think I only link the shorts in the shorts uh, playlist, but I probably should start putting them in the sharpening too. I'm not sure if I do or not. Um, but anyways, you can watch the shorts too. I do a lot of little tips and tricks on shorts, trying to sum things up. It's difficult to get good information in 60 seconds, but you can watch my full videos, man. I got a ton of great uh, sharpening videos. Uh, what would y'all recommend for a daily Kaiser Civivi button lock or Wait and save up a little more and get a bench made bug out. So I would always, no matter what, if you ever ask me that question, I'm going to tell you to save up and get a damn bench made because it's USA made, right? Now, if it's difficult because like part of me knows, you know, like, you know, Kaiser's has some damn good knives and you feel that your money was well spent. Bench made, they do too. But there's times where I've gotten benchmades where it's not that I didn't feel like it was well spent, but they have the best warranty. So there's a lot of reasons why benchmades are great. I'm carrying one right now, right? Carrying one right now. They are awesome. I love all my benchmades. Kaisers are great too. And even though I want you to spend USA and buy USA, so that's what I'm going to recommend to you. You can't go wrong with a, a Civivi or a Kaiser, right? So I would say either one, you know. Um, but yes, if you want to just wait and save up, you can. But Civivi and Kaiser kill it, man. They, they really do. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um. Jared been into knives for quite some time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, yeah, it's been definitely a while. Kaiser doing a great job on button lines. Yes, they are. I actually have a couple right around me right now. I got the Kaiser original. This one, man, the copper one, my copper one, has the strong. I'm not going to say the strongest I've ever felt on a button lock, but it's got a solid detent. But my other ones of the same knife are not as strong. They're like a little bit lazier, but they're still really good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but the copper one in particular, man, this thing is, it pops. But yes, their button locks are awesome. Um, I got the button lock bag lighter right next to me too. 
great knife, fantastic. And they got the button lock XL bag lighter because they have the, the regular size version and the XL now. So, and they also have, those of you that don't know, they have, oh, another one I'm going to give away to you guys, to the patrons. I bought you guys a drop bear. I know everybody wants a damn drop bear. I made sure I got one of you guys one in the box still. Same one as this one, purple thumb studs. Um, anyways, uh, what was I going to say? Yes. They, oh yeah. They have another access lock knife or what do they call it? I forget what they call it, but it's a crossbar lock knife. They have a new one coming soon. Sorry, man. I, I got the lighting kind of messed up right now, but this drop bear is it's so good. I can't even express how good of a knife this is. This is a damn good knife in every way. Um, the way they did the clip, the ergos, the size, the blade shape, the grind, the, the action, the uh, how they did the holes so you can actually increase the strength of the, um, the Omega Springs. They call them some other type of spring. And then they even give you thicker springs so that you can even make it stronger because it comes on the strongest tension when you first get it. But you can make it stronger by switching out the Omegas on the same setting. If it's crap, so what if it's American? Make better stuff. Um, no, I, I agree. I agree. I'm not like, I, I don't, maybe I'm jumping into a conversation I didn't see. No, if it's crap, absolutely. Absolutely. Make better. Do better. I, I will never tell somebody to buy something that's American just because it's American while it's crap. But like, if we're talking about the Benchmade thing, the Benchmades are not crap. Benchmade makes great knives and they definitely improved. Like I remember... I think it was two years ago, two years ago, they had a little bit of a slippery slope, but they, they got their shit together really quick. They're doing good shit right now. And like I said, they have the best warranties. Uh, if you have any issues, you're guaranteed they're going to take care of it. That is one company you could call them. Like, it's not like a lot of companies where, oh man, I'm trying to email them. I can't get them to get back to me. You can call them right on the phone. So, and they're, they're the, what they're going to tell you is send it on in. That's it. They're, I will take care of it. No problem. They'll even pay for the shipping a lot of the times. Um, they're, they're amazing over there. They really are. So, and that, that, that costs something, right? Even like the lifetime sharpening, like you might not ever use the lifetime sharpening, but just the fact that they give it to you, that costs something because a lot of people do, a lot of people do send in their knives to get it resharpened. So I wouldn't advise it. I would say just sharpen it yourself or send it to um, somebody who's going to use stones because they're going to use a belt. So they're going to sharpen it the same way, you know, it came to you probably. Um, I would just advise just send it to a sharpener or something. But, you know, you don't have to. I mean, you can send it back in and take advantage of it. Brazen Tonto versus Elementum Tonto. Brazen. Brazen, it's a bigger size. It's full size. I think the spear point and drop point, um, I think the spear point on the, the Elementum is better for the Elementum. Um, on the Brazen, I think um, either one's good. I, I'd pick the drop point most likely, but the Tonto, they do a good Tonto on it either way. Same thing with the Elementum. Both are good options, but the, the Elementum is a smaller knife. Oh, Antimatter with the five bones. Hey, Jared, about two miles back in the comments, you missed my six-month shout-out. Sorry, man. It, it's because it, it jumps and I don't get the choice. Like it literally like what will happen is, is my chat will literally jump and I don't see it about six months back. So it's probably too far back. Shout out to antimatter six months being a member. Um, I do appreciate it, man. And I'm sorry if I do miss anybody's uh, thing. It just, it jumps. Like I don't, I don't get the choice. Like when, um, I'm trying to catch up to the chat, like it'll just go zoop and be gone and like get, catch me up basically. Because I do be getting backed up. Deacon says, I sent that Koenig mini goblin. You sharpened 
to get a new choil put on and they rebladed it without me asking. No shit. Just an example of U.S. makers taking care of their customers. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, a uh, pro tech, I acid etched, reground a blade and I paid for it. Don't get me wrong. I paid for it, but they allowed me to send it in and get a new blade on it. Even though I was the one, like, it wasn't like it was just over sharpened or anything. I reground it. A lot of companies would say, man, you voided the warranty, stupid. But no, I was still able to, to uphold the warranty on getting a reblade, which you do have to pay for because you're getting a reblade. But I was happy with it, and I wanted giving it to one of the patrons. So I basically got to give the patrons a brand spanking new knife. <laughs> JC with the five bones. My opinion, Kaiser is killing it with their detents and quality for the money. Just order the bear. You just showed um, love the black. You just ordered the bear. Dude, you're not going to be. You're going to be thrilled when you get it man awesome knife um i mojave outdoors i do have the link for mojave outdoors where you can save uh some money off i'm not sure if they have them in stock right now but i can tell you what though if you go to my amazon link there is some of the the, the plain versions left not the black versions uh, but they should be back in stock soon if you guys are waiting out for the black ones Bearded Doom with the five bones. I do dip and chew Big Red, Maurice. Dip and chew Big Red. <laughs> um, regarding the Elementum... Ooh. I started for some reason. I've never even seen me myself do that. Um, regarding the Elementum Tonto versus Brazen, the S35 Elementum Tonto is 59 on Blade HQ at the moment. Wow. No. I didn't know that. So, yeah. That, that it's. I mean... That would be uh, just a couple more dollars or a few more dollars more than the D2 version. Because remember, the uh, the Brazen is not 14C28N like the drop point. The Tonto version is D2. So, yeah, that's a good deal. Um, in that case, yeah, I'd probably go with the Elemento. And it's thinner. A lot of people don't know that, but it's thinner. Um I had one sitting here. You missed a a CBE chat? A CBE. What's a CBE? Oh, we got a new member in the house. James. Shout out to James. Hell yeah. And, and Maurice with another with another five bones. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill, well said. I like that. Now that that's a that's a damn quote. I like it. I like it a lot. I love encouraging quotes. She gets my juices going. Um, it's like, I mean, I'm always like, I try so hard. Um, you know, life kicks you in the ass. No matter what, everybody doesn't matter who you are. You there's no exceptions. So I, I, I think it's just super positive to talk to yourself mentally like a warrior, like just encourage yourself as much as possible and just talk to yourself like a beast and keep yourself going, kick yourself in the ass as much as possible. Um, you know, it, it's, it's like that saying, like, you know, like you shoot for the stars, you know, so you at least get as high as possible, but uh, you know, you might not hit the stars, but at least, you know, but even not even just that, but just like encouraging yourself to, to be good and do better as much as possible. And just, uh, you know, I guess, uh, pumping yourself up, I guess, you know, even if it is mentally, but the more you speak like that to yourself mentally, the more you speak like that, just out of your mouth. But yeah, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Andrew Lyons says, how do you store your knives? What would you recommend for someone with around 30 knives. So there's a ton of different cases. Like you can get these. You can get these rolls like this. This is a Carhartt one. I actually got a video on it. Um, you can go to my Amazon link. And just type in Carhartt tool roll. You'll get this. Um, this one holds. I'm not sure. Like 25 or something. So this is a close one for you. Um, cases are really good. But for you. I mean, if you plan on getting more, if you have the money, 
There's also, I also got another case over here. I can't grab it because there's stuff in the way, but there's a case. It's got layers, so you can uh, pack. I think it holds like 60 knives or something. That's a good one. It's a zipper one. You can literally just go on my Amazon link, go into my Amazon link and type in knife cases, and you'll see it. It's got a zipper, and it opens up, and it's got layers. And that one's actually pretty good. But there's so many different cases you can get. Just depends on how many knives you want to store, how convenient you want it to be, how protective you want it to be. Because the most protection you're going to get is going to be something, you know, like this. You know, but those are not cheap. So I don't recommend them unless if you got some knives you want to keep really protected and want to travel with them and things like that. Um. Beard of Doom with another five bones. No matter what happens in life, I will always be there to catch you when you fall. The floor. <laughs> Said by the hardest thing. The floor. <laughs> Fuck around and find out. Maurice says, I have one of those. I have a video featuring it. Remember, I'm an enthusiast, not a fucking reviewer. <laughs> Quote by... Maurice, what's that wood one you got back there? That's a chest. So I would recommend go if you want this, you can get it very affordably. Um, this was the USA made one that is a lot more expensive, but you can get it on. Um, oh man, help me out, guys. What's it called? Um, oh man, what's it called? The place, um, you can get it for like 90 bucks on, uh, come on guys, help me out here. It's called, um, there's a place you can get it from. That's very, very, no, not Etsy Harbor Freight. Thank you, Luke. You're the man. Luke's the man. Um, and Chris, you were just wrong. You were just wrong. Not Etsy. I'm sure you can get it from Etsy though. <laughs> uh, but Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has them for like 90 bucks and it's got the drawers. It's got a pull out shelf at the bottom with felt on it. And then, um, all the drawers have felt and then the top unfolds. Um, it's badass. I love it. I love it. That's like my favorite thing in here. Look at this guys. This damn lamp is still going this way. That lamp is still going. Now I, I haven't left it on this whole time, but that thing's been on since yesterday. So I've ran it. I know it says 180 hours on low. I probably ran it five days to six days straight. All in all, it has never been charged. I've never once plugged in a charger. Not once. Uh, I'm waiting for it to just die, and then I'm going to plug it in and charge it. But that's crazy. Um, it's nuts that it just keeps on going. It's been going since uh, yesterday morning or something. So... I can't believe it's still going. And so, but those things, what's cool about it is that when it's, I guess it doesn't have to be fully charged, but when it's fully charged, I know mine's probably about to die, but you can charge your phone off of it. Like if you're camping with it, or if you have it somewhere out on your porch, like say if you buy a couple of them for your porch, if somebody's sitting there on the porch, you guys are smoking a pipe or whatever, sitting there chilling and they need to charge their phone. You can charge your phone off of it. So I think that's awesome. Um, that's cheap for a wooden chest. Yeah, no, it is. This one's like 400, but like 350, 400, but the exact same one you can get off of Harbor Freight. So, you know, um, Amazon has the three pistol size box, which is similar for 1050 comes with a pluck and pull centerpiece to customize. My vids are between 30 and 50 seconds. I try not to bore people. What are you trying to say here? <laughs> but if I watch their shit, they can watch mine. There you go. There you go. Um, What's up, Jared? I'm looking to buy a fidgety spider co with serrated edge, but I don't want to spend more than 40 bucks. There are a ton on eBay and Amazon, but I'm not sure which ones. That's going to be tough. Because spider codes, I mean, they have like the tenacious. I think you can get the tenacious uh, serrated. That's where I would go. It's not going to be super fidgety though, because they're all on washers. If you want fidgety, you got to go with the compression lock or their um, 
uh, their ball lock, which is not, I'm not saying it's not fidgety. Trust me. You can still spidey flick it. You can thumb flick. It's going to be good. It's just not going to be drop shut at least probably ever, but you can still spidey flick it. It's just, it's not going to do this. It's not going to drop shut like that. You're going to have to swing it. Like it's going to take some effort to swing it down. Um, like this, it's going to be, you know, where it's not drop shut. You'll probably have to close it with your thumb. Um, maybe at least for a while, maybe after a while it'll break in and get pretty smooth, but yeah. It, um, if you want spider co specifically go for the tenacious for, uh, for, for around 40 bucks, that's going to be your best fidget action for that price. Cause they're, they're better ones though are going to be a lot more. Looking for a good fixed angled sharpener for my hinder and CRK. Should I get a TS prof KME or other TS prof all day long? Um, I'd recommend you to go to my TS prof video and pick one of the sharpeners I have in the description. Um, because they're, they're just, they're hands down far better than KME. KME is like, it's going to be jankier and rankier and it just takes all that stuff out. It's an elite built system, precision built. Like when you get it, like, like the one, the first one I had, like, I was like, man, this seems like it was built from NASA or something. Like the parts are just machined so good, which takes out a lot of the negatives that you might get from a KME. Now, in some cases, like, like with the last one I did with the, um, the cadet, get them upgraded cadet, the, like the cadet pro or whatever it is. Don't get the, the base model cadet with any of them. If you're going to get the blitz, get the blitz 360, always get the upgraded version. Because what happens is, is they originally come out with the base model. Then they figure out like little things they could tweak and make better. And the better version comes out after and they they it's not that they fix issues but they they figure out where some downfalls are and they they fix it so get the updated one um if you get the cadet or any of them just get the the best version of that model um that's what i would do if i was you and yeah i would definitely go with i wouldn't even like it's not even an argument between the kme and that like it, it's far better not saying that if you only have 200 bucks, the KME is not awesome, but it's a four inch stone versus a six inch stone. Now, if you only have four inch stones, you can still use the TS prof because you can adjust it. You can use whatever size stone you want, but that's the beauty. You can use any stones, any size stones, and you can use the bigger stones. So you're not messing around sitting there like you can actually do a good, you can do it a lot faster. Um, all right, I'm backed up on the comment, so I'm going to uh, zoom forward just a little bit. Um, so if I uh, missed anybody's comment, you can comment it again if you want me to for sure read it. Um, Todd Carr's in the house. What's up, Todd? Please gently caress, then hit. Bang, slap, swap, punch, deck, destroy, kill, terminate, crack, right down, uppercut, jab, poke, break, flick, give, the reach around, humiliate, and nuke the damn like button. Thank you, Todd. Every single one of those things. And if you do it multiple times, just make sure it ends up blue. <laughs> just in case if you, you hit it too many times, you might have accidentally unliked. Um, I have a workshop precision adjust. See, like the workshop precision adjust is, is great if you're on a tight budget. If you're on a tight budget, that's great. Now, if you if you can you can upgrade the parts you can get all the upgraded stuff um that's what I got but if you're going to want to get the stones and all of that you know the KME it, you're going to spend pretty close to the KME maybe not as much but if you got the money just get the KME if you don't get the workshop precision uh but I do recommend though if you get the workshop precision you can massively make it better by getting yourself a stone holder. You don't have to buy all the stones right at once. You can slowly purchase one every week, buy a new stone, right? Spend 20 bucks, 30 bucks and buy a new stone, but then you can get bigger and better stones than they supply, but you can't do it unless if you buy the stone holder attachment that massively upgrades that system because otherwise the stones are so tiny. They're half inch by four inch or something like that. And they're just, they're small. They, they wear out quick and you can, 
once you get different stones, you can put any finish you want. You, there's, it's just so much more versatility when you have other stones. My knives are 75% fidget toys, 24% pocket jewelry, and 1% actual use. I have two knives that I have hard used for decades. The rest are toys. Bang, bang. Hey, man. Um, I think a lot of people do that. I think a lot. I think everybody uses their knives, at least most people. Uh, but, you know, I think a lot of people have a knife collection because they like collecting, right? They like collecting. They like the action. They like the thought of having somewhat of a modern primitive tool, right? Modern primitive weapon tool, whatever. Uh, but they have specific ones that, man, I will do anything with these. I will beat the hell out of them. But this, this guy, this guy isn't going through that. Now me, I pretty much will use whatever. I don't really care. And we're actually going to talk about hinders really quick because I'm and we're not going to go into it too deep, but I wanted to do and show you guys the difference between the thicknesses of blades between the XM 24 we have the Hinder XM24. Shout out to Mr. Amazing because I would not have these without him. This dude is a beast, man. But I think the blade stock is 187,000, something like that. Let's check it really quick. <clears throat> so we have 183,000. I think they were going for 187. But so nice and thick. This thing is a beast. But it's big, bad, and uh, Ready for action. Now, the regular XM18, I think is 165 thousandths or something like that. Yes, 165 thousandths. 163, 164 thousandths. So, nice and thick. Now, the skinny, my favorite one. This is the same, the same size as this one, but skinnier. So, this one's thinner. So the skinny actually goes down. This is why one reason why I love it so much. The blade stock is only a hundred and third. Mine's one hundred and thirty-eight thousand. So I'm guessing it's between one hundred and forty thousandths or less. Um, so a lot thinner. Now my thickness behind the edge on this one I think is twenty-eight thousandths right now. So not thin behind the edge, but it's also not too crazy. That's actually, you know, pretty good. Um, I put a super low angle on it. It is sticky, sticky sharp. Now, my other one, I didn't lay back the angle as far, but let me check the thickness behind the edge really quick. Come on. Zero it out. They're about the same thickness behind the edge right now, but... If I had the low angle on this one, it would be about 32 thousandths. Because remember, I put the low angle on the other one. This one, I have about 17 degrees per side on this one. This one, I have about 15. And this one might even be a little bit higher than that. It might be closer to like between 17 and 20. This one's got a nice low angle on it. And it is ridiculously sharp. Whew, sticky, sticky. I love it. Um, what hinders steel choice? M390. Yes, I got M390 and 20 CV. So I have 20 CV on that one. Oh no, 20 CV. Yep, 20 CV on all of them. I do, I think I do have yeah, I think they're all 20 CV because 20 CV is USA. Um, I think they no, I think they do have one M390 one, but, but those are all 20 CV. The best best self-defense knife is still. An unarmed cop. Wait, the best self defense knife is skill in unarmed combat. My Spider Co. Sharp Maker stays busy though. <laughs> what stone can be used to sharpen all blade material? Diamond plates. You want diamond plates. That, that. Diamond plates or diamond stones. The difference between plates and stones is plates is a metal plate with diamonds on the surface. They eventually wear out. Diamond stones has it's a resin with diamonds in the resin. So it makes it to where 
they don't wear out as fast or like not fast at all. They last a very, very long time, but you do have to eventually condition them. You do have to maintain them. Diamond plates, there's no maintenance. You don't have to do anything. Just rinse them off or wipe them off, whatever. You can use them dry or wet. It doesn't matter um, because they're super flat. You never have to flatten them or do anything with the stones you do. So there is some maintenance with the stones, no maintenance with the plates, but they are both diamonds and that's what you want to work on any steel. They will sharpen any steel um, and and fast too, especially as long as you start with a coarse stone. You need a coarse stone. Never start sharpening with a um, medium grit stone. It's just, it's not smart. It t it's like, you're always going to remove the same amount of steel. Always. No matter what, you're going to remove the same, sorry, no matter what, you're going to remove the same amount of steel. So why would you want to start with a medium grit, which will take you five times as long as just using a coarse stone? Always use the most aggressive stone you can possibly use to reprofile, sharpen the knife, then the rest of the stones, you can change the finish of your edge or refine it. Hey, Karen and Jared, what is up? Oh, I felt like Ben Peterson just now. <laughs> uh, Dumbass moment here. Is 20 CV better or worse? It's the same. It's just different countries version, but it's the same as M390. M390, 20 CV, and 204P are all the same. How often would you add more gunny juice to a leather strop? About every five strops, stroppings, depending on how big your strop is too. If it's a little strop, I would do it like every couple times, every two or three times. Um, it, it doesn't last a very long time, but you don't need much. That's the point. Very, at a very, very thin, thin layer, you only want it to coat the surface. Now you can you can get by longer than that, but I personally do it about once every five straps. Now, like I said, you can get more out of it or less, but it also depends on how much you put on. But the thing is, is that the, the, the leather counts too. So I personally, with the gunny juice, I try to go for a leather that's firmer like this because it gets to sit on the surface longer. Like if I used this type of leather, where it's like the suede style, the diamonds can fall and get down into the, the fibers, which is fine, right? But it's also going to have a chance to, to get clogged in there and things like that. It's it's a little different. Not, I'm not saying it's still fine because it's still diamond. So, you know, the more you coat it, you'll just have to use more, basically, what I'm trying to say. But if you use this side, the firm side, it's you can take a little drip and spread it over the whole thing. So a little bit will go a lot farther on this type of surface. On this surface, you'll need a lot more. And, but then with this surface, sorry, with this surface, just reapply it. Um, like I said, you know, once every few sharp or few strappings. Beard of Doom says any one of my knives could be called self-defense, but I guess all of my knives, wait, but I guess all, of all my knives, my blades has served zero purposes other than causing harm would be my Riet EXO Bayonet and Benchmade Auto Fact. Um, well, the one thing with those blade shapes, those blade shapes are really good for that. Like the fact, you know, it's very pokey. It's made to poke. SC knives? SC knives uh, have the best warranty. I, I know I said, um, I know I said uh, Benchmade. But technically, the best warranty is SE. Because I could take an SE and break it on purpose, and they'll replace it. So they have the best warranty. Benchmade is really close, though. I'm slow on links tonight, but I can still type. I appreciate it, man. And no problem, man. I, I understand. Um, you can't always be perfect. You, you, you've definitely done your, uh, <laughs> your work in here, though. Uh, what's Jared's preferred steel? It depends, but I love 14C28N. I love crew wear. 
I love I love 20 CV when it's heat treated, right? Um, I love Magna Cut when it's heat treated, right? I love K K390 is possibly my favorite steel. I love K390. I love crew wear. I love 14C. S90V. I love S90V. Um, but I like all steels, though. There's really no steel I dislike. I just dislike certain steels for certain applications. Like, I don't like AEBL on my folders. On fixed blades, chef knives, things like that, it's fine. But I don't like it on my folders. Um, I don't like CPM 154 um, very much. Um, I like 154 CM, but I don't like its powdered version, CPM 154, very much. I mean, it's okay on certain things, but I'm just... If I have the choice, I'm not. I'll, I'll buy a different steel. Um, you can buy, sell, or trade an SE, and they will honor the warranty. No questions asked. No need to prove pro proof of purchase or anything. I know, and that's what's so awesome about them, man. That's why I said they're the best. Like I can't even argue. Like the best warranty is SE. There's no questions asked. Um. What do you think of Z-Wear steel? I don't have a lot of... I, I can't really speak on it. I don't have enough um, time. Not enough time with it. I like S45, Mandicut, M390, and Nitro V. All great steels. Hey, what's up, man? Um, hashtag action for you. What's up, Jared? How's your Saturday going? Pretty good. Not too bad, man. Thank you for the 10 bones. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, hopefully yours is going well as well. Um, I have a few SE knives, very solid build and dependable. Yeah, for sure. They, they do make solid knives. Um, great outdoors camping knives, definitely reliable. And like we were saying, you know, the beauty is, is if you break it, snap it, whatever, they'll just replace it. So you can't beat that. You really can't because, and you can't expect other companies to do that. So, like, you can't look down and, like, saying, oh, well, these companies don't do that. Yeah, no shit, right? Most companies aren't going to give you the free-for-all, like, ah, go break it. I'll just give you another one, right? Most companies are not going to do that. So, and you can't expect them to. Especially, like, with fixed blades, like, that are made to be beat on. You know, but they do try to make them pretty robust so that they, they're able to take that shit. Oh, just got the Quiet Carry Chase ES Thumb Studs version with LC 200N today. Highly recommend. Um, highly, rec highly recommend you do a video for it. So far, I love it. Yeah, Quiet Carry does a really good job. I like their knives. They do do good do a good job. I did have a bad experience on my first one. Um, but I, I've worked it out. So now the same knife I, I love. So a uh, great knife and that's with Vanex and that's a phenomenal steel. That's another steel that's really good. But problem is you don't see it. Nobody uses the shit. It's like the only two, com I can only think of like two companies that even use Vanex and that's Quiet Carry and, uh, Shiro Goroff. I don't know. Can you guys name another company that uses Vanax? What is a lock bar insert really worth? Will you be, will you be ever be able, or will it be necessary to replace it? Um, you will. Some companies send you an extra one. Some, not all, but some do. Uh, but yeah, in in some cases, if you have a problem, that's what they can fix. They can replace that that way. Like say, um, like say if you're having um, lock slip or um, blade rock or um, even detent lash in some cases, they can swap out that and fix it. Now, in a lot of cases, they'll just send you a new knife because it's not worth sending it in and doing all the bullshit. But depending on the company, depending on the details, yes, is definitely worth it. One, it prevents lock stick. You know, and also like if you do start having issues, the one beauty is you can loosen it and like, kind of give it a little move, you know, move it around a little bit and you can possibly get rid of like blade rock and things like that. So it's uh, definitely a good thing to have in most cases. I'm not saying all because there's a lot of great knives that don't use any lock bar insert, but it can take some issues out that could possibly happen in the future. 
uh, and also can make some knives uh, even more reliable and uh, tougher and stronger because you're making steel on steel contact with titanium on steel. You got to carbonize it and it's got to be thick enough. And like, there's a lot of details, not saying it's necessary, like it's, you have to use it, but in a lot of cases it, it's, it's a, a good option to have or a good thing to have. My first Kubi came in today, a Nova. Nice. I'm impressed. Titanium full-size frame lock with 14C28N. Black drop point, and the action is fantastic for $89.99. White Mountain Knives. Yeah. Um, you should have used my 10% discount code. You could have got it for like $80.99. Right, $80 but, um, yeah, dude, the Nova's a great knife. Um, I, ha I used to have the titanium one. I think... I think I gave it to one of the patrons, but I have a G10 model now. Q and Bean says, I lean that way. Oh, he's talking to Todd. Talking to Todd, not talking to me. Praxis or Tonto Brazen? Praxis all day. Praxis all day. Um, Not to me. Not to me. Not to me. Which Venice stone would you finish D2 on? I noticed the F240 seems a little low, and the F400 is about 1,200 to 1,500. Yeah, I would actually use the 240. Um, that's right around 600 grip. That's what I usually always finish it on. You can go up to um, the, um, what is it? It goes, wait, it goes 240, 400. The, yeah, you can go up to the 400. Um, so either one of those 240 or the 400 will work just fine. Also, it depends on how new your stones are too. If they're brand new, the 240 is going to be more aggressive than if you've used it a lot. Um, and how often you, you know, condition it and stuff. But, uh, but I personally finish on the 240. It's, it's like technically like 400, 500 grit, but because Venives are a little different, the grit ratings, it's a 600 grit. I've compared it like under a microscope and it's, it's a 600 grit. Um, recommend a warning to me, zero to $200, a warning. Well, the Kaiser, um, uh, critical mini is three V for a hundred dollars. My Carta in three V for a hundred dollars. That's a really good warning. Um, another really good warning is, uh, Ooh, the Finch harvester. That's kind of a sheep's foot warning. So it's not technically like a warning, but it's very similar. That's a really good one. Oh, oh. The Kaiser Doman Sheep's Foot. It's not a, a warning, but it's a sheep's foot with a hollow grind. 13 thousandths behind the edge. I can't recommend that knife enough. That's an amazing knife. But if you want an actual worn cliff, like a lot of people uh, mix those two together between sheep's foot and warning. I think as long as it has a straight edge, it's, you know, it, it's what you're asking for. And in that case, I would say the Doman. But if you're wanting the spine to do a round taper, then I would, um, I would recommend something else because the spine doesn't do that. It does a, a sheep's foot on the spine, but the edge is a warning. It's a straight edge. So on both examples that I gave, who says there's a new critical mini 154 CM, um, stainless blade coming out in a month. Yeah. I actually seen that post. That's awesome. Uh, because one Kaiser does a really good job with their um, with their 154 CM, but the 3V man, I mean, I I got mine in 3V. I really like it. That 3V is a kicking ass. Now, but like like Vu just said, 3V is not stainless. So if you're in an area where you know you got to worry about corrosion, you might want to get uh, the 154 CM in a month if you're wanting to wait a month. The Doman is sick. The Doman is badass. Like, that is such a good knife. Do I have it right here? Tell me I have it right here. Oh, here's the critical mini. I thought I had it right here. I might have it in this case. Give me one second, guys. Give me one second. Give me a second. Yep, here she is.
Here's the Doman. Oh, it also comes in a, just go to my Amazon link. Go down in the description, go to my Amazon link, type in Kaiser Doman 154CM and it'll come up. Make sure you type 154CM, otherwise the other version will come up. And they have the other version with the satin blade and um, brown micarta. It's a super deep hollow grind. It is super thin. And this action is ridiculous. It's so good. Look at that. It's a damn guillotine. Like You can't get better action. You just can't. Deep carry clip that is reversible and adjustable. Now the crit critical mini is going to be a little bit more compact in the handle, but you can still get a full four finger grip. Fantastic uh, blade geometry, all that. The action is stupid good. Now, they have the White Mountain Knives exclusive version with a hole in it as well. The detent is going to come strong if you get one. Um, but if you just keep messing with it, it breaks in and you, you'll, it'll be easy to reverse. Like it just takes a little time, but the detent is nice and strong on these. But I, man, I can't, I can't scream about that one enough. Uh, da, 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 da. I like the critical mini a tad bit more. Um, well, yeah. Um, like I said, if you like the critical mini a tad bit more, uh, go with that. I mean, it, it's solid choice. Uh, the micarta is great. Micarta is nice and comfortable in the hand. The clip works really good. The action is really good as well. It's a solid choice. I have a full review on it, by the way. Jared, what would you recommend for first Spyderco knife? A uh, Manix. A Manix or a uh, Para 2. If you don't like something as big as a Para 2, or then go with the, or sorry, the PM2, then go with the Para 3. But the Manix um, is probably what I'd recommend. The Manix is great. It's just such a good knife all the way around. It's a knife that you can use for years. I'm a German EDC knife manufacturer. Give me your email and I'll send you two nice German World War I EDC trench knives for free. Oh, man. Hit me up on Instagram or on my email. My email's at the bottom of the... Oh, damn. In all my videos, I put the... um. I think it's at the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom of the description in this video. Just email me. I'll get back to you. Just email me at the bottom of the description. You'll see my email. Um, and... Uh, yeah, hit me up. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Thank you. How much is the mini gripper going for? I'm not sure. Probably three something, 300. I'm not positive though. I like 154 CM, but I feel like I'd enjoy 14 C 28. And I like 14 C better than 154 CM. Technically, a lot of people would argue that 154 CM holds a little bit longer of an edge. I find that that's not really that true when it comes to real world use, maybe in a controlled cut or something maybe, but it, it's, it's such a small amount that you don't really tell. The reason why I like the 14 C a little bit better is, uh, it takes, it does really good with really thin geometry, right? Um, and it takes a better, finer edge and it holds a finer edge longer. So 154CM does really good with a medium grit edge. 14C does really good with a polished edge. Uh, I DM you some pics. On awesome. Thank you, man. Hell yeah. Some upcoming releases. I seen one. Uh, I, I only seen one picture, but it was a crazy looking knife. I thought it looked badass. So I can't remember was it a tanto with a dual grind or something like that i can't remember but I, I seen it on instagram before uh we went live i didn't get much time to look at it though david says a pm2 for sure um one beautiful thing with either one of them the the pm2 or the manix especially the pm2 you can get them in so many different steels like right now you can go to my amazon link and type in spiderco PM2, and you will see a crew wear version pop up for like 170 bucks, 180 bucks. I can't, like, that's an amazing deal, and that I'd probably get that one, uh, the PM2. 
And if you want, you can get go to OCD for EDC site and you can get yourself a CME, which may, which is like um, it's a little uh, piece of micarta or G10, whatever you want, that you can put on the compression lock and make it basically a button lock. Oh, I'm telling you, man, those sl the slish buoys are badass. I love my slish buoy. I don't scream about it because I know people can't get them. Trust me, if if I knew I could link one or, or tell you guys to go get one, I would be screaming about it from the rooftops right now. But I you, nobody can get them right now. So it's like I, I hide my passion for the slish buoy. I love the slish buoy. Now I'll be honest though, the I you know well I guess I can't say it because it's still Spyderco, so I'm sure their M390 version is phenomenal, right? They they probably do the best M390 you're going to be able to find is Spyderco, but their CTS XHP. Now we were talking about my favorite steels. Spyderco CTS XHP is one of my favorite steels. They do an incredible job with their CTS XHP. I don't know what type of voodoo magic they do to that shit, but it is insanity what they do to it. Like, I think possibly the longest edge that I've ever been able to hold on a knife possibly. And maybe they, maybe that's not true, but from what I felt like has been from spider coast CTS XHP. Um, I know, uh, the magnet cut that, uh, that, um, transparent knives did for me. That was probably the, the best one, excuse me, because it's heat treated to 64, um, 0.5 HRC. And it's, you know, you know, it's a custom heat treat, but as far as production knives goes, man, that CTS XHP is just like, it's insane from spider co. Um, like even with the factory edges, like they just, I don't, I think maybe like, because that comes from their Taiwan factory or whatever, I think maybe they, they, they're maybe they use water or maybe they just do a better job with their factory edges. But even the factory edge is just, it's so good. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I usually try to link everything down in the description. Um, you can find all ways to contact me and, and like join Patreon and things like that all down at the bottom of the um down at the bottom of the description. Now, if you want to become a member though, because tomorrow we do have a bang gang live sharpening tomorrow for the members. That's um we might have to change the time though, guys, because you know, uh Cole. He goes live from like 11 to like three or something. And I know it steps on his foot when I go live at noon. So we might push it forward to like one or two o'clock. I know he'll technically still be live, but damn it. He's live all day. So I need to be able to jump in there sometime. So, uh, but we're going live tomorrow. Bang gang live sharpening tomorrow. So don't miss it if you are a member. And if you want to join and be a member, you just hit the join button next to the subscribe button. There should be a join button there. If you can't see it, use a different device on some people's phones. They, they can't see it for some reason. You just have to use a different device. 14C is tougher and has better corrosion resistance. Yes, that's another reason. It is definitely tougher. I mean, it's a super tough steel. It's like one of the toughest steels. This one's the 20CV version of the, um, of the, the elementum button lock. I really like this too. Uh, it's technically a gravity knife. I'm not going to argue with people about it, but it, it's a gravity knife. But I love it. Badass. But yeah, I would recommend just getting the regular version with my Carta. Um, I really like the knife, so that's why I have the titanium and 20 CV version. But the my the my Carta version is 14 C 28 and with a hollow grind. So I would recommend that one over that one. Um, would you say that the S30V is sufficient for a knife that you will use for a lifetime, even though all the super steels out are out? Yeah, absolutely. S30V is a great steel. So don't sleep on S30V. S30V is just fine. Now I will say this. If you're tough on your edge, like 
on certain edges, like if it's thin and you're really tough on it, you might experience microchipping. If you're hitting staples and things like that and it's thin geometry, then you might want to go with a tougher steel. But if you're cutting regular stuff, cardboard, plastic, paper, straps, rope, um, wood, things like that, yeah, S30V is phenomenal. It's a great steel. And it'll still be fine with hitting, you know, staples here and there and messing up if it's thicker geometry. But when you start getting to thinner geometry, that's when you can experience a little bit of microchipping if you're hitting shit, right? But if you're not hitting stuff like staples and rocks and things like that, man, that steel is amazing. It holds a really good edge. It's very stainless and it takes a really good edge. Shout out to Oregon. Thank you, Jesse. Um, my darn abyss is about to be paid off. Then I got to make it through the shit storm of August. Then I'm probably going to buy another blade. I got, uh, I just had to pay off my, um, the Leong Ma, the new, uh, what is it? The field duty 3.0. I don't remember whatever the new one is. Um, I bought that one that, the pre-order was like from like last year. I don't even know how long ago it was, but whenever it started, however long ago, I finally had to make the final payment now. So I should be getting that pretty soon. That was one of my pre-orders that I got. McCaw says, oh, and thank you for the five bones. Can you do a review Hunting slash cleaning knives, maybe best blade materials, ergos all around for on the hunt and field stripping slash cleaning. Yeah, I might be able to put something like that together. I would say, you know, like there's so many different knives that that's the problem with it is that the video would be specific to that knife, right? So I would say it's about more about your kit, having yourself a good kit. If you can have a good kit with, you know, with all your bits, a little driver, maybe two drivers just in case, because you might have something with two pivots, um, you know, and then, you know, having like basically like a roll, having a roll with the little tools, your, your alcohol, your oils and things like that. So that, and, and even more importantly, a damn work sharp field sharpener specifically that one, the work sharp field sharpener. You can put it right there in the same kit, roll it all up into a pouch. That will work great. Now you can sharpen, hone, maintain, and work on your knives. But yeah, maybe I should put something like that together. That's not a bad idea. Is Blade HQ the only retailer out of, wait, is Blade HQ the only retailer out of Israel himself that's selling Arcane? I have no idea. There you go. There's um, Cole's live tomorrow. Um, shout out to Tri-State EDC. You guys can uh, check out his live tomorrow. Awesome, dude. And I don't want to step on his toes with his live because I know uh, we planned on doing our lives at noon, but I know he goes live at like 11. Like I said, I don't know what time he stops, but I think it's like till like three o'clock and that's a long time. Now we got to get to scent of the day. Scent of the day is it's a new one. Ooh, I almost spilled my coffee. Woo! So scent of the day is it's a sweet one. I think this is the sweetest fragrance I've ever smelt in my life. Now, there was one I recently, not recently, but you know, uh, not too long ago, I showed you guys that it was really good. And that was a sweeter fragrance, but it was like a juicy sweet. This one is pure sweet. Now, some men might think of it because it's so sweet as a more feminine. This is a men's fragrance, but it's a sweet men's fragrance and it is damn sweet. It smells like pure candy. Um, let's see here. So it's hazelnut, cedar, plum, honey, amber, and patchouli. And this is 1 million lucky. 1 million lucky. The atomizer, the spray is really good quality. 
Like it, it, and it's very long lasting. I didn't put it in the thing, but I'm going to right now because I feel bad that I didn't do that. I'm an idiot. Idiot. Um, give me two seconds. It is, it's really good, but I don't, I think like if you like a sweet fragrance, I'll tell you this, a lot of ladies are going to love to smell this on a man. Now, I think if you're an older man, that might be too sweet for you. Right. It might be too sweet for you. You got to be a certain type of guy. And I don't mean feminine. I just mean like you, it's going to be a time where you're going to want to be going out to the club, going out to the bar, maybe something like that. Um, but, you know, if you're a younger, good looking guy, you can definitely get away with this. And I don't mean get away with it. I mean, like do really good with it. Like it's a woman pleaser. Like it's something like put it this way. When I put it on. Kara was like, you know, like going crazy because it's, it's so sweet smelling and inviting. It's almost edible. Like it, it, it's crazy. Let me, uh, I'm going to put it in the, okay. All right. I found it. Um, give me two seconds. I'm going to put it in the chat. I'm looking for a cheap one. They're not cheap. They're not crazy, but they're not cheap. All right, there's different one millions. Lucky is going to be the specific one. I found one for, for 84 bucks. I'm going to put it in the... It says earthy and woody, and, and, and it says notes of hazelnut, green plum, and cedar. Don't listen to any of that. It is so sweet, like candy. Um, You do smell the hazelnut. It's like caramel. It's like sweet caramel and like uh, cotton candy caramel. And I mean... I guess you smell the hazelnut and maybe green plum, but it's just sweet as all hell. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. So don't take that like in a bad way. It's in an inviting, good, warm way. One million. So fragrance of the day is in the description now for you guys. If you guys want to check it out. I, like I said, I told you who I recommend it to like, it, it, it's definitely something that uh, it it stays on you too. You just need one, two sprays, two sprays. You're good to go. It throws you, whoever's within two feet of you is going to smell it. Um, it's not one that you have to get up really close to. You will smell it. So if you're going out on a date, that's a good time. If you're going out to the bar, the club, that's a good time. Um, it's not going to be a day to day fragrance. It's not going to be one that's, it's not like super versatile or anything like that. I wouldn't say that this is like, um, it's something when you want to warm up on the couch with your lady or go out on a date, something like that, then this thing's going to work and you will get compliments from it. It's a compliment getter. But like I said, though, it's for, I think for certain men, they might find it a little too sweet and they might want something a little more, um, something with more woodsy or smells. And, uh, you guys know what I mean? Something that's, that's a little more less sweet. Now I do have one that is probably my favorite fragrance right now, and it's a sweeter fragrance, but it's different. It's not the same type of sweet. It's a boozy sweet. I've talked about it before. And I do have that fragrance video coming out here really soon, but uh, because I've gotten all my list, I got my list ready to go. Um, and yeah, um, YSL is amazing. Um, actually I have my favorite YSL is the Le Parfum. That is, but it it's going to be on the list. Let's just say that it's going to be on the list. YSL. Le, there's a bunch of different YSLs. The one I, I personally don't like it all is the, um, Eros or no, no, sorry. Sorry. That that's Versace. Um, what is it? The YSL. I can't remember the name. Anyways, the La Parfum is the one to go with though. That's the best one in my opinion. There's another one that's really good as well. Hey, there we go. Stas is in the house. Uh, Stas has got YSL. That's what's up, man. I'm telling you YSL. My, my personal, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. There's one specific one. I can't remember the name of it, um, but I don't like it. There's one I don't like. All the rest of them I love so far that I've tried. Some I haven't tried, but the La Parfum, 
right now is my favorite one from the YSL line. And then I think the, I think it's called, I don't know if it's the original, but um, I have another one. I think it's the original one is also really good. Yes, definitely go and subscribe to Stasa23. Yeah, then yeah, that is some some panty dropper stuff. That's what's cool about that that fragrance is that it's sweet. It's on the sweeter side. It's sweet, but it's fresh clean. So it's got that fresh shower gel, fresh out of the shower smell, plus sweetness, plus a little bit of like earthy woodsy smells along with it. So when you mix it all together, it winds up being a very versatile fragrance. It's a fragrance fragrance you could wear every day you could make it a signature uh scent and it um it, girls love it i mean like you know obviously we use fragrances to smell good for the people around us so that they can enjoy our company but we also like to for you know the person you're trying to attract to like the scent of you and want to be around you i have yet to have heard any lady not like what that that fragrance I just splash a little KPL on my face, rub it around, and I'm out the door. <laughs> there you go. Um, but uh, what is this? Uh, Lacey says, you know what cologne I love on men? Um, I don't know that one. Um, oh my God, that one really gets me in trouble. Well, you guys just wait, man. I got, I changed it to a seven. I was going to do the top five best men's fragrances, but I'm going to seven. I'm going to do seven because I, you know, I want to add a couple on there that I think are like, they're really good. They're still in the same field house and still really good. But you know, I want to be able to, to get people an affordable option too, because I have a couple really affordable fragrances that are like heavy hitters. Like they're still, 10. um, and like I always say, I think men should have about five, at least five fragrances. That's what my opinion, if not more. Um, just because you want something signature, something that's just like day to day, you just spray it on. It doesn't matter if you're going out, if you're going to somebody's house, if you're, you're, it's always good. Right. But then there's like the special ones, the ones like, Hey, I'm going out on a date or I'm going out to the bar or, or maybe I have a meeting or something. Right. So these are like specific things that you, you use that cologne for. And yeah. And also it does something with your, man. Like your confidence, you have to be able to to walk around, you know, it, it, and feel good. And when you know you smell good, it makes you feel good. It makes the people around you they can they can see it, you know, um, vibrating off of you. And I think that that's a good thing. I think uh, you know, making people feel good around you is always great. And when you feel good, you make other people feel good. And it's just yeah, um, and. Like I always say, you know, like the, the people that like hitch about that stuff, like I, I'm not, I don't think I even have to say it, you know, like you're the stinky guy. Like you don't want to be that. Like put it this way. Let's put it this way. When men, when you think of your ladies, right. And this is specifically to the men. Don't you want them to smell good? Right. Of course we do. Right. Of course men do. We, we um, we are very visual and, you know, and, you know, a lady that smells really good is going to be a lot more intriguing than one that stinks like shit, right? I don't have to go all the way to the dramatic. We don't have to do that. But even that just doesn't, right? Like, so let's say that one has no scent versus one that smells good. Of course. Same thing for the ladies. Now, when you're around men, when you're around men, right? If you're around a, a bunch of alpha males, right? They notice if you smell good or not. and if you do, it says something about you, right? It says something about you and the people that you're around and how you want to be a, a pre, you know, approached and appreciated and how you hold yourself and how, you know, it, all of that stuff means something. It really does. You know, so the way you take care of yourself, people are going to treat you better when they know you take care of yourself. That's a fact. You know, people that treat you like shit, right? Or usually because they think you treat yourself like shit. 
Aaron says, ever since I grew out of my grew out my beard, my beard oils have replaced my cologne, and collecting them has become an addiction, just like collecting ice. Right. And you know what? And I should have mentioned that. I'm glad you did, Aaron, because that's what I always say. That's what I always say. If if you don't have clones and you, you know, have beard oils, have things like that. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be a clone, but it can be different things. Like you can have beard oils, you can have skin creams, or even like they have the fragrance ones like that are like lotion that are scented. You can even get the like the combination where it's like, you know, you have the, the body soap and the fragrance that matches all that stuff. But, you know, as long as you're taking care of yourself and having something. Um, but yeah, beard oils are great too. Um, they even have some for like your hair and stuff. Uh, but there's no problem with you spraying a fragrance, you know, like on the back of your neck, like right on your hair. Uh, certain sprays, or I think all sprays, they last longer on clothing than they do on skin. But some fragrances last so long on uh, shirts that um, you have to wash them if you want to wear a different fragrance because they'll stay on them. But most fragrances only last, you know, so many hours. I have that one. I on, I think it's that one. I didn't like it. Not saying it's bad. Let me let me be clear. Um, I have. Oh no, I have the Layton. Sorry, I have the the Layton, the Parfum de Marly Layton. I have that one. It's okay. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not my style. It has a little bit more. It's it kind of has like a cool mint to it that that I'm not passionate about right now. But everybody evolves, right? Like this could be something I could grow into and actually like. I would say it's not that I wouldn't wear it because I totally would. I'm not saying it's bad in any way, shape, or form. It smells good. Um, I'm just, it's not the fragrance for me right now. Um, it just has a little tiny bit too much uh, green and mint to it for me personally right now. But I do know that a lot of ladies like it though, because I bought it and I bought it because I heard a bunch of people recommending it. So I'm not saying it's bad at all. It's a good fragrance. Um, I got it on my fingers right now. It is a good scent. It is definitely a clean scent, a fresh scent. Um, it smells definitely very, very, uh, clean and fresh. And, um, it may, you know what it, it makes me think of like, uh, like jumping out of like a cold uh, lake or something like kind of, I don't know. I'm just my brain. Um, he's 86 and never gets rid of his old cologne. You know, I know I got like a little bit in my DNA too. My grandpa, Right. He passed away when I was a, a baby, so I never really knew him. But I heard stories about this man my whole life. Like, I feel like I know him because I heard so many stories and everybody knew him. Like, he was a rolling stone. So he loved colognes. And I used to go down in the cannon room of my grandma's house and there was a whole wall of shelves. And on these shelves, he has all these different colognes. And they were like cars and like actual things. So like colognes used to be made like that. So like he collected colognes that had cool bottles. Maybe he collected them for the fragrance. I don't know. But these colognes had weird bottles. The way they were packaged were unique. And this whole shelf was full of all these different, uh, or these shelves were filled with all these different like weird cars that were bottles and different things that were bottles. It was really cool. So I know I got a little bit from him. Um, practice or send cut actium. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. that's a tough one. I, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Okay. First of all, either one is great. I don't know. That's tough. That's a tough one. I'm going to say praxis. Praxis because it's more comfortable in the hand. That's it. Other than that, the 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 act 
the Actium has a hollow grind that's very thin and has a little bit better geometry, but the Praxis has a spear point blade that also has really good geometry. It's the way a flat grind should be done on a knife, and it's really, really good. But I would say the Praxis. Yeah, the Praxis is... It's a versatile knife. It's a damn good knife. I actually have the the Allurus, the Ferrum Forge Allurus right now. And to me, that is like the premium Praxis. I love it. I love that knife. Um, it's like one of my favorite knives right now. The Ferrum Forge Allurus. It's a great knife. I also have the Ferrum Forge Archbishop 3.0 right here, which is great. Mine has a BGM regrind. At ten thousandths or something behind the edge, something like that. Stupid thin. Um, I know the send cut sash sashes sashit, whatever the hell it's called, is back in stock right now. That's the new button lock. Uh, the new button lock um send cut, but I would still pick the Praxis, just because it's tried and tested. All right. Not saying that the button lock will fail or anything like that. I'm not saying that. All right. I haven't tested it yet. Now the Praxis I have, so it's different. Um, Praxis also has way more scale options. I'd love to see a Nitro V or 14C Praxis with some carbon fiber or my card options. I agree. I agree. Everything you just said, I agree on. I would love to see that as well. I would, I, you know what I want to see? Check this out. This is what I want to see. I want to see one done with a hole, but tell me I put it here. Oh, no, I didn't. What did I do? Oh, it's right here. Let me get another nice hole. Check this out. Now, I want to see this done on the Praxis and on this knife. I'm going to just do it really quick just so I can show you guys because I did it earlier and I want it so bad. Check this out. Now, picture the Praxis the same way. Look at that hole. Wouldn't that be badass? Look at that thing. This is the, the Ferrum Forge Allurus. I love this knife. I love the Archbishop 3.0 too. But I don't like that the, the clip rides right on the cutout. The Allurus fixed that because they put the cutout on the inside. So. If I had the hole on this one, same thing with the Praxis. Because remember, the Praxis and this look very similar. Hoo, hoo, that would land in the perfect spot. And this has the perfect detent for reverse flicking. I mean, look at this. But yeah, it still has a great detent for the flipper. This does have a tiny bit of better flipping action. This detent is a little bit crisper. And you can even hear it. I mean... The f I mean, I love Ferrum Forged models. I should get those guys on the live one day. You should get your wife on the live? Yeah, I should. Is that what you said? That's what I said. You definitely said get my wife on the live, right? Mm -hmm. Not Ferrum Forge. I did not. No. Why no. would you say that? No, exactly. Be way better. Right. And here is my lovely wife, Kara. Jared looks like he just got done waiting tables at a steakhouse without... Maybe I did. Maybe I did. What's wrong with that? Talking shit about my new my new 9 to 5? <laughs> uh, I would love to have a set of them if you ever want to sell it. Oh. Hey! Hey! Lacey, oh, you guys are having a conversation without me. So... I know it's uh, past story time, um, but I think Kara's coming back. So maybe, maybe we'll skip story, story time and hang out with Kara for a few minutes. I did have a good story, guys. I did. But we'll hold off and we'll hang out with Kara. We'll hang out with my lovely wife. Um, and we'll tell that story next week. It's a pretty good one. 
this when she comes back. I am. I swear. steered me to them for the Real Stone Megalodon exclusive. I want to visit Indiana Knives one day. I'll have to take a little trip up there. I'd like to visit one of the knife dealer, one of the knife places. Um, any one of them, like whether it's Smoky Mountain Knives, Indiana, or whatever. I've never been to any of them, so I'd love to try, uh, you know, or love to visit one of them one day. Best budget. Best budget from Flipper. Anything better than Kubi? Anything better than Kubi? Um, if it, you're talking specifically uh, budget knives, I would say... Um, I mean, I don't know what you mean by budget, but like the the Civivi, um, what the hell is that Civivi called? The um, which the Civivi? the one by uh the guy who passed away. Um, oh, the McKenna. The McKenna, Civivi McKenna. It's small, but it's a really good front flipper. Super snappy action. It's small, but it. It's it's where's slim and knife? small, but that's also what makes it good. Yeah, where's my new slim and small? Yeah, I like this one so much. The Bob Trizula. This one's really cool. Did you do it? Yeah, the Civivi yet? Imperium. That's another good one, too. Thank you, Q-Ball. What's that? Did you do, like, a thing on this yet? Yeah. Yep, they already know about it. You can go ahead. Bow. Bang. Yeah, this is a great knife. The I haven't even tried the black one. Let me see it. Does it feel different? Ah, uh, yours is a little tiny bit smoother. Yeah. Because mine has a coating. Not by much, though. No, I could feel it. There's a difference. Under $80. The, the McKenna. The McKenna or the Imperium. Both great knives. The, the Imperium is going to be longer and slim. And the McKenna is... Um, Short and slim. It's about. I mean, it's still slim. It's, they're both slim, it's but it's not that short. The McKenna. I'm not saying it's like tiny. I'm just saying it's a smaller knife. It's like the size of one of these. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were already comparing it to that. That's why I was no. confused. No. Oh, sorry. I wish the Chizula had better lock access. You know, I said that in my video that it's it's okay. It's not bad, but you know, I always appreciate a little bit more. But yeah, you know. It's still oh, okay on, that knife. Yeah, on this it's one. Fine, it's okay. It's, it's good. Close. But it, it, it's, yeah, that's what it is. It's close. It's close like, call. it's like, you are very close to be having bad access. It's not bad, but you're close to it. Yeah. So that means I always, I want it better, right? But, or not but, and this, mm. I guess, isn't about, because this is Terzola, so that's his design. But I noticed, man, Savivi's been kind of pushing the lines with that shit. And it's not been making me very happy. Best knife on a $55 budget, specifically. Uh, Kubis. Kubis or the Civivi Praxis. We've been talking about it all night. Kubis? This... Kubis, yes. You don't know. Kubis have been kicking ass. I know. Um, All year with their budget knives between $40 and $50. Um, but... I, uh, but the Civivi Praxis, forty-four bucks. Um, the Kubi uh, Momentum, the um, Kubi Momentum, actually. Yeah. yeah, that thing's kicking ass. The, That's um, a good one. Oh, sure. oh, oh, oh. The um, the CB CMB made knives Predator. That's a really good one. Like right, right around fifty bucks. Great, that's all. What's I'm your a, deal? I'm hitting this thing. Oh. Oh. I'm learning to praxis. Is that like a joke? Like I'm learning to practice? Because if so, that's fucking hilarious. There we go. So here's the CMB made knives predator. Yeah, it has such like a soft sound. It's like my Carta D2. Great uh ergos, great sharpening choil, great blade shape. Here is the Kubi KU322. This is another great option. Stupid smooth. This is a full-size knife, though. So this is a big knife or a large knife. Multiple deployments. Stupid smooth. Um, great fit and finish. Great everything. And this is uh, right around 50 bucks. 
fantastic option, and it has a lot of different choices, lots of different colors. This one only comes in two different colors. You didn't get the yes, momentum? the KU 322. Bang. No, I did not grab the momentum. I think it's right behind me, though. This is a great knife. Yes. Here's the Kubi Momentum. Sometimes you can find this even lower than 40 bucks. I've, at least I've seen it. Um, but great ergos, great blade shape, redonkulously smooth. The front flipper is very easy to use. Did we get on the mini Arius pre-order? No. No, I wish we did. Oh, wait. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm in like a thousand bucks. Yeah, I just that for some reason I... Let's think, you know, something else. Out of, out of our that. league. Hey, there's Knife Modders. Did you? Oh, uh, I didn't. Hey, I wasn't get reading it. 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 Why didn't you tell me who said it? it Why don't you at least tell me? Well, because. You're leaving me out of the. Well, you read your out comments, of the, I you just, know? I just leaned forward. Yeah. I was relying on you. You're I supposed you to sit. you be using your phone so you could see. I, I have been this whole time, but I didn't just now because I was relying on you. Um, thoughts on the ATCF light? I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I just did a first impressions on it. Um, you can watch the that first impressions. I like it. I really it. like it. I think it's a I really love it. good knife. Like I just all around nice little. It's small bang. and compact. It's really tiny. It's very thin, small, but very fidgety. In a um, good way though. It, like they didn't do a bad job. Like it's not so thin where it's like stabby into your hand thin. I love it to be bigger, but it's great though. Um, well, that's not the point of it. Isn't the point of it? it yes, it is small? yes, yes, yes. Hey, man, any recommendations for someone to learn how to sharpen tantos with no experience? Knife slash steel. Um, I have an entire sharpening playlist. I do have videos on how to sharpen tantos, um, whether it's freehand or fixed angled system. Um, tomorrow we have a Bang Gang members live. Um, it, I, if you were a member, I'd say uh, become a member. Because we do live sharpenings tomorrow, just like we're live right now. We do that tomorrow, uh, what time twice, are we doing twice it? a month, probably two o'clock because of coal. Um, you maybe you should keep it the same tomorrow and then switch it when you have the members there. I've it's talked about time. it here. I'm have sure. You? Yeah, okay. I'm sure uh, it'll be fine. So two o'clock. Um, is the ATCF light flickable? Very flickable. Three. Cuddles? Yeah, because the hole is a sharp. And it, it grabs you. So, like, even left-handed. I'm not left-handed. It's very easy to flick because it, the edge is so sharp. But, uh, but yeah, I would say watch my videos. I can't really tell you here, but we talked about it earlier. If you rewind back to the beginning, I talked a little bit about sharpening this. You just have to treat it like two knives. You have to sharpen this portion and then this portion separate. So, you sharpen this edge. You know, like say you sharpen this side, then you move towards the tip, then flip over and do the other side. And you just have to treat this like two different knives when you sharpen it. But you have to marry the edges. I've done lots of lot, lots of um, uh, sharpening videos. Check out, I have a playlist. If you go into my playlist, I have a sharpening playlist. You just have to go to my page and then you can slide over. You'll see playlists. Click that button. Then you'll see my sharpening, my reviews, my first impressions and all the, the playlists. Apparently, there's three Kyles now. I'm married with six kids. I don't know. How I love how you tolerate your woman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you. Is it tolerate or is it enjoy? I was going to say it's pure enjoyment. There's no toler tolerating needed. <laughs> um, we want, what does that say? Buttons? Butters. Be be oh, butters. You know. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. You know, butters will never die. I know. Listen, butters know. is the most the innovative knife design. I know. I you know. don't even know stuff about butters. I don't. You know that? You're telling you know me. that the scale actually um, <laughs> hydraulically lifts up <laughs> for a secret spot to yeah. hide things? Did Tell you know that about, about Tell butters? Me about Tell me about it. The scale goes, it goes like this. It goes, and then you can hide like, like little stuff in there. Okay. Like flakes of gold or like a snack. This sounds special. It sounds like a million, Pills, million you know, dollar like knife. Your, your wow. Advil, wow. You know, your Advil. No, he's a, uh, Butters is a knife design that the world isn't ready for. Um, you, know, you don't know the true wonders. <laughs> of I don't know what link he just put up. 
But uh, butters, I want to believe. I want to yeah, believe. Yeah, I want to believe. I was literally just thinking of that picture earlier, and like I started making up a whole butter song in my head surrounding the "I want to believe." Mm-hmm. Like that, literally this morning, I was doing that in my head because you know, crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, butters. If you don't know, you should learn. I have to see you tomorrow. Take care, Bang Gang Squad. All right, Dennis. I'll see you tomorrow, bud. And we're sending you stickers, we promise. Yeah, we were a little late on mailing, so that's going to be, uh, everything's going to be shipped out soon. We got a bunch of stuff we have to ship out. Stuff. We're, like, really late on everything, so yeah. forgive us, please. Um, Titan. Wait. Thank you for the five crackers. Titanium scales on a budget knife. Worth it. I already... Wait, on, oh yeah, it's definitely worth it. I mean, uh, to each their own, but I'm a titanium whore. So I love titanium um, on budget knives, on premium knives. I just like titanium. So I'll take it however I can get it. Um, I do think sometimes though, it, uh, in some cases the price goes up because of the materials, but the quality hasn't gone up. So it's just titanium on a budget knife. And then you can tell, right? There's a difference between a titanium premium knife and a titanium or a budget knife that they threw titanium on. There is a huge difference. So don't mistake it just because you bought a budget knife and it happens to have titanium on it. It doesn't, and unless if it's Tucson, in a lot of cases, Tucson it would be a considered a premium titanium knife, but when you're talking about certain knives, just because they threw titanium on it doesn't necessarily mean it's all of a sudden a premium knife. It's still the same budget knife. It just has titanium scales. So, But I still love it. Except drop in tile um, on Brandon. tile. Yeah, uh, we, we know about that one. What's up? Right, go ahead. Go Brandon, ahead. if you want to email knives at gmail.com. With Links your address, in the description. With your address, I can help you out with that. <clears throat> um Rat uh, K2, what does that mean? That's uh, a knife. Chris? He, I he, know. he dropped it on the tile when I borrowed it to him. That's what he's talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. You didn't think I Fucked knew. Fucked it all up. Did you just look at me, Mrs. Neves, when I said React K2 and you said it's a knife? No, I was trying to finish the story. It's a knife. It's the knife he dropped on the floor. No, that's not what That's what did. I was doing. Um, Everyone knows that. Your wife you kind of looks like that lady from Adam's family. Oh, the, the, um, I know what, where's, I know what, what he's talking about. I don't. I'll show you. You're talking about the, the mother? No. Not, not Wednesday. Yeah. The Adams family. Morticia, Morticia. Damn it. That's the mother, Morticia. Um, I disagree heavily. <laughs> Um. Yeah, she's all. She's pretty sassy tonight, ain't she? You better. What? Yeah, you better calm that shit. Scorpio is available if you want to check it out. Shout out to Blade Banter. Um, and it, maybe one of the moderators can link that for us. He says the Scorpio is available. <laughs> Her cousin it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. That's actually, the one. that's he's hilarious. About for sure. Must be. Must be. It's hot in here. Holy hell. Um, can I be lurch? I used to do that when I was a kid all the time. What's your favorite knife brand? Ooh, that's tough. I don't know. I can't really answer that. Probably because I have my hair parted down the middle today, too. I would say my most recommended would probably be Spider Co. So you could say really? that's my... Yeah, because they do so the... so crazy because when we got into knives, we hated Spider Co. Yeah, we, we did. I've told that story a lot. Lady. Yeah, I've said that a lot. Um, but it's Spider Co is a brand you warm up to because they do a good job. Their heat treats are like the best heat treats you can get from production knives. And they, they're a good worker knife. Like they're just a good user. And I think a lot of people start out hating them. And the reason why is because of the way they look, they have like a look to them, but the longer you're in the community, you realize like that it, that's a damn good knife and they're made for use. So, you know, it's just such a good knife, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite brand technically, but it definitely be my most recommended. Jared um, is a spider hoe. <laughs> I like I hinders. Like I like, like, I like a lot like of that knives. With spider co. I don't feel like we're like spider co. People. How many spider co's do you think we own? I'd like Less to know. Less than other brands. 
How many do you think we own? Less than I think. I think there is multiple brands that you own more of than. Spider I Coast. guarantee that's true. Many multiple. I guarantee that's true, but I guarantee I own a lot more Spider Hose than other spider companies. Ho. Like that's like going far. I just spent, Spider Hose are like the people you. who are into knives, but they only post Spider Hose. Yeah, that's like yeah. a spider. That's ho. a spider co fanboy. Spider ho. I'm definitely like not that. that, that term. But I've got a lot of spider co's. I have scales coming for the Capara and scales coming for my PM2 right now and a clip. And like I got a whole dress coming I for. I do love my Nick B a lot. I love my um my Hinder XM18 skinny sheep's foot. I love uh I like a lot of knives, man. I'm just a, I'm a knife guy, so I love them all. Um, like obviously I love certain ones better than others, <clears throat> but uh, that from Patty? Patty, I need to impregnate your wife. She won't be so. You chatty. need to. Oh, not you him. Need, I, th Ew. I thought I said I. <laughs> well, I was saying I. Right. <laughs> I need to impregnate my wife. So wait, she won't be so chatty then. She'll be too busy running after babies. Um, is that? Yes, yes, I did get it from Ray. Yeah, and uh, it originally came from, I believe, Seems Logical to Ray, and then from Ray to me, so I'm happy that that's how it went, and I'm happy I was able to help out Ray um, because he's on another journey now, which I think is going to, you know, improve his channel and help out a lot because he's uh, going to start dedicating a lot more time. So him and uh, his wife got a lot of crazy plans, not crazy, a lot of awesome plans coming and I want nothing but the best for them. And they have my full support in any way I can help. So I was happy to buy that knife. When there is one knife you could take with you when okay. about ending up like Tom Cruise and lost, which would it be? Wait, what did that say? If you had to take one knife with you and you were going to end up like Tom Cruise and lost, which would it be? Definitely a fixed blade. Is that I never movie? seen the movie, but I'm guessing it's Wait, fucking like lost on the island. The thing where he like is, has Wilson? Is that the name of that movie? Lost? Oh, yeah. He said Tom Cruise, I thought. Oh, I'm thinking of Tom Hanks. Yeah, you're thinking of Tom Hanks. But what? I don't think I know what Lost. I don't know that either. I, I knew there was a show called. I don't know that either, but I would say some sort of I probably of top knife though. or something. Yeah, something, some sort of fixed blade. Maybe my katana. Oh my. Maybe my quachetti. Wait, 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 a fixed blade or any knife? Well, any knife. I want that thin one. I know that one. But that's a one. folder. But I like it. No, you need a fixed blade. I like it. No, you need a fixed blade. I like it. You need a fixed blade. Okay, if I need a fixed blade, then I want that cane knife that Cold Steel makes. A cane knife? Yeah. I'm I from wanna, Scotland and coming to the U.S. Surprise for all the tigers, so they don't know. Peter says I'm from Scotland and coming to the U.S. in a few months. What <gasps> American sales only knife would you recommend? I well, pick I just up? read about Buck like not selling outside the U.S. Did you go through that stuff? Yeah, I already did. Did you? Yes. My um, research. So I would go with, I mean, it depends on your budget. Like, it just depends on your budget. And because uh, you go with a Chris Reeves knife, you can go with a Hinder, you can go with a Medford if you have the money. If not, then I would recommend probably a Benchmade Spider Co. Like or a Hogue. A Hogue. Definitely a Hogue. Don't Spider Co. and Chris Reeves both sell outside the U.S.? Sell their knives outside the U.S.? I don't know how easy they are to get. I know that Buck, like, I know, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I literally just read through the whole policy today. And I, I think they're one of the ones that don't like a Buck Marksman. Very unique knife. Mm -hmm. Very worth it. I know it's not like the newest on the market, but if you can't get Bucks normally, but you can get a Buck Marksman with that unique lock, I, I think that lock is really cool. The um, SLR lock, strong locking, or is that right? SLR? Yeah. I yeah, but you can't so get long. that though. Why? They're discontinued, baby. Probably two years now. I know, but don't people sell them? No. Like resell them? No. no can't get them. Like um, in a store even? Nope. No? Oh. Nope. They're gone. They're all gone. But I would say probably a Medford. Medford um, or a Hinder, if you can afford it. Um, You can get a Chris Reeves Hinder, etc. through Lamina, I don't know. Um, I, can, I can link Medford's uh, on Amazon. 
directly from like certain knife stores that that have Amazon stores. I'm not sure if it's directly through Medford or I have to look at it, but it's it's the real thing though. It's not like knockoffs or anything, but the real deals. And um, you're welcome. They're man. usually reasonably priced. I mean, they're still expensive, but. I looked deep into that website, John. Like, I went full investigation. Yeah, she did. She did. She went, uh... I disproved yeah. any shadow of a doubt. She made sure she was reality. positive by the time she came back with this note. She was 100% positive. She was like, uh... I you were like an investigator for I like an hour. A lot of information hour. that they probably didn't even know that, like, people could find. Or they probably... Uh, uh, a she, lot of scams lean on the fact of hoping that you won't you won't look, look up anything yeah. and there's certain information with domain <gasps> names that has to stay public like for websites I, so I, they can't hide that information it has to stay public so that was an, a really easy start why why'd you uh, why, oh you we're, like we're gonna talk about something um shout out to dennis a new channel member i didn't get it over of, here i thought he was already a member he yeah he's already a out? member yeah you don't get another welcome. yeah dennis you get one welcome over. yeah you're a member already. I don't understand. Do you guys use knives on each other in bed? Uh, we actually said there's no more balisongs in bed. So every knife but balisongs, yes. Now, <laughs> next thing, really quick. Um, I and Listen, <laughs> I, I really want you guys to do this. So if you guys get a chance, when that's when those scammers come back in, because there's so many of them. Oh, the comments. Scammers. Yes, yes. So the comment scammers, you know, with the numbers, do me a favor. Waste their fucking time. Call, call, I want you to text them. Make sure you take a screenshot because that's what they're going to ask you to do. They're going to ask you to take a screenshot because they don't know who you're talking about. Remember, they they do that to like a hundred different channels. So they want a screenshot for confirmation that you won. That way they can see like, okay, this is somebody from Neve's Knife. Right. Then they can tell you what you won. And right. Stuff. They can like, pretend to be the correct person. But home. so they accidentally scammed ours with Stasa's. Yeah, Put it that way. That's how inconsistent up. they are. So they scanned our People. thing with Stasa's stuff. So like it has Stasa's thumbnail and stuff saying that pe my people won something from the video. And when it's not even the right thumbnail. Anyways. Yeah. So. Text the number, right? Act like you want it and just fuck with them. I don't care what you can come up with. You guys know how to mess with people. Mess with them. Maurice, yeah, you I'm sure you will have a great time, Maurice. You guys pretend like you, you're going to send them the money. I don't care what you do. Oh, just waste their please. time. Ask them for details. Like, yeah, do can you I send me a picture? Yeah. I want to see a picture of my knife I want. I can't wait to see it. Then when they send you a picture of some cheap piece of shit Pakistan Which is, just knife, to be clear, that's they what will. they do. I, for background, I did this. Yes. What he's saying, yeah. I spent the time yeah. to do this with one of them. Um, and I got, like, the picture of, like, the knife they were supposedly sending. They never told me the name of it or anything. And they'll, like, dodge a lot of questions. So just be consistent with your line of questions. Like And act like act you. like they know you. Be like, you know me, yeah, Jared. You know me. Act like just... I was like, what are you talking about, Jared? We've known each other, like, from the rip. Yeah. Like, why are you so, acting like you don't know me? So they'll like if you if everybody saying, does this, I kept saying, is this Jared or Kara? <laughs> if everybody does this, they'll probably get sick of doing it to me because you know they, they'll they don't want to sit there and have to waste their time with all these people constantly, right? So just do it just to have fun because you know it'll waste their time. All right, waste their time. If thirty of you Dude, are doing Alex it, Alex will be king at this. Yes, yes. <laughs> if thirty of you guys do this at the same time, he will waste so much time texting back and forth and like bullshit. Have fun. <laughs> I'm going to tell them my grandma just passed and left me millions, and see if they have knives they want to sell besides <laughs> the giveaway knife. That's Spend your hilarious. Time asking all these That's questions. That's hilarious. Make them research it so they don't. You know. And Jared, I know you have a really nice collection. And I just got a lot of money from my grandma passing away. A lot of money. I really want to buy a lot of knives. Do you have more than just the knife you want to give me? Yeah, do all that shit. Uh, make up names of knives. Like just what? do it all because. John, they don't know not. John Doe said he had an email from Nigeria stating his rich uncle died and left him a Protec Malibu. They really targeted you so I was like, nice. Nice try, asshole. <laughs> How do they? That's such a specific, like, scam yeah. that they know that that item has value to yeah. you in some way. That's really actually kind of creepy, like, how specific that is. 
I troll them and act like I'm a scammer. Yeah, I think uh, anything you can do. And yeah, then anything. At the end, just waste you know, their time. If they start getting frustrated, bust them out and be like. Yeah, Neves uh, got the whole squad, and we're you know shutting you down. So anytime you post on these knife channels, you're gonna get just get your time wasted. Right. I told the one that um, I told this one that I texted that if he had just asked, maybe we would have helped instead of him scamming, right? And so I said instead of that, I would I took that money. And I spent it on someone whose sole job is just to delete your comments now. And I just went through and for like three days and just deleted every single comment. I haven't seen that I can't one in believe a while. GP Knives sold out of the re at what the heck. I know. I am just going there and telling them to hold one. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. That's why I bought one for the patron members because I knew they were going to sell out quick. I, can't um, believe they I bought myself I one and I bought the patrons one. So you can't. It's too sticky. What's wrong with it? Watermelon stick, baby. Oh. We got to clean it. So, all right, guys. I love you guys. Shout out to all the patron members. Don't forget, we got this huge giveaway. Not only the regular giveaway, but then we have the 200000 giveaway coming. Like I said, you got to get the Riet EXO coming. You guys have a bear, uh, um, a drop bear coming. You, got, you guys have a bunch of shit coming. Um, also... Um, shout out to all the Bang Gang Squad Bang members. Gang. We have the Bang Gang Live tomorrow. We're gonna do it at two o'clock instead of noon because of uh because of Tri-State EDC, the son of a bitch doing a live all day long. Um, shout out to Tri-State EDC. Definitely go and follow his channel. Also follow Sasha 23's channel and everybody else's channel in here. Shout out to everybody who donated tonight. I do appreciate it. You guys have no idea how much it does help the channel. We do this, uh, we're able to do this because of you guys. So thank you guys so much for that. Like I said already, we have the GP knives um link and the Blaze Q new link. So if you guys are going to be going on those sites anyways and buying anything, we would appreciate it if you guys just use our link because it will benefit us. You guys don't have to pay anymore. It'll just benefit us if you guys are making the purchase anyways. So um same thing with the Amazon link. We have that always down there. So if you're just getting something random, we do appreciate it. Um also shout out to all the people that watch our ads because that is such a huge thing. <laughs> shout out to the ad watchers. Uh, shout out to the ad watchers. <laughs> I, I know so many of you have told me that you guys um, watch the ads or click on them for at least 30 seconds. And that is a huge thing for the channel because we don't get any revenue from the ads unless if you guys watch 30 seconds or click on it. So shout out to you guys for doing that. Thank you to everybody who liked this video. If you haven't done it yet. We would appreciate it. Thank you guys for staying with us and joining us with the live. It does mean a lot to us. Um, we love you guys. Peace. Peace. Because I'm back in.